An explosion of color, pattern, material, and media. The fusion of gender, race, ethnicity, culture. A showcase of talent, creativity, inspiration, and cutting edge art. That is Pattern ID at the Akron Art Museum. Almost everything about Pattern ID doesn't follow the normal pattern. It's something unique. It's not your father's art. No, it's not your father's art. It's very loud. It's very flamboyant. Uh, I think it requires uh, an open mind, uh, curiosity, and the artwork is, is not subtle. In this exhibition, we ask everyone to think how the way we present ourselves reflects the values that we identify with, the cultures that we come from, or the cultures we want to be identified with. This exhibition I think is groundbreaking for us because instead of taking, normally museums take an idea that's already been proven, or an artist that has been established, and you go from there. With this exhibition we're taking a new idea and younger artists and establishing them. This isn't the easiest art for everybody to understand and like. It's really an, um, an important and very stunning and um, very exciting exhibition. I think it's fantastic. The designs just blow me away. They just are uh, the creativity involved with it is just really beautiful. It's it's kind of like exciting, like rock and roll. <laughs> so far, it's just incredible. Everything I've seen, I love. Uh, this exhibition has been a work in progress for a long time in the mind of curator Ellen Rudolph. She came to us with this idea. Um, in fact, she mentioned it at her interview when we were um, hiring her. Mitchell came to me in the spring of 2008 and asked me to uh, expand on the concept of artists using pattern and dress as a way of talking about cultural identity. We live in a more complex world and our identities therefore are more complex. Who do you identify with? What religion? What ethnic group? What sexual orientation? What religious group? And the way we present ourselves, the way we dress, reflects those things. It's the artwork of um, a multiple uh, viewpoints, younger artists, but most of them dealing with the kind of things that we all deal with in our day-to-day -day lives. Who am I? Where do I come from? What am I trying to say? And this exhibition was going to be a great demonstration of that. At the same time, it took an idea, how you dress, what kind of patterns you wear, and that meant it was going to be visually spectacular. In other words, it's an important concept, but it's executed in a way that's visually thrilling. There are 15 artists, 41 works of art. Uh, the artworks are comprised of photography, sculpture, painting, mixed media work, and video, and uh, made from materials like felt and yarn, Dutch wax cotton, uh, fiberglass mannequins, found uh, garments, bindis, painting, uh, lots of rhinestones, and iron, scorched iron, marks, professional sports jerseys, and the artists come from all over the world. There's geographic diversity, there's religious diversity, there's gender diversity, and there's diversity of media, and that is crucial to the exhibition. I think it's a really high quality, themed, uh, innovative grouping of artists, and what is groundbreaking about it is that it brings together this group of artists and allows people to see them in a, a new context. And with Pattern ID, the context revolves around artists using pattern and dress to express identity. I think pattern and dress uh, unconsciously reflect who we are because every day w when you go out, you, you've either got your own personal decisions to wear checks are black and white, or to, to bring something uh, that, that's from your cultural background, like a plaid or a tartan, 
or your, your kente cloth that represents your, your tribe. You are you're representing yourself or your culture, sometimes without, without even trying. One thing that was really exciting was to realize that artists from all over the world were using uh, pattern and dress in this way of, of dealing with the complexity of cultural identity. I'd say all of the artists in this show speak to what's going on at the moment in and around the art world, internationally, locally, in New York, LA, in the Midwest, uh, in Europe. And it's just kind of the right work at the right time. I've called these artists during a couple of tours recently, especially as multi-hyphenates, and they have uh, a multitude of, of backgrounds and, and influences, some of their, their own, their own by birth, and some of it by sort of our global nature, where they sort of acquire and appropriate um, those influences just from, from how they travel or where they've been in their lives. The 15 artists in this exhibition are at different stages of their career. For some, like Hinda Wiley or Nick Cave, they are already appearing on the covers of art magazines around the world. For other artists, uh, like James Goebel, uh, he's earlier in his career and being in this exhibition will be a great boost for him to have more exposure and to be seen in the context of artists who are already, in a way, celebrities in the art world. They have this thing inside of them that they have to let out. And when they let it out, their personality comes through, whether it comes through in their sexuality or who their friends are or what their personal relationships with people are. It's something that's totally indicative of who they are as an individual, like uh, James and the chubby bearded fellows or Mickey or Kehinde and the young guys that uh, he used to talk to on 125th Street when he was in the Studio Museum program and asked to model for him. And it's this thing that they just can't contain that has to be expressed in the work. One of the reasons why the exhibition came together in the way that it did is because a lot of these artists know each other or were influenced by each other, and some of them had never shown together before, and they were thrilled to be combined in this way, um, knowing that their work spoke to each other um, or that they had been uh, influenced by a, an elder artist, uh, and to be seen in, in the same you know, exhibition with them, I think for them was thrilling, and that went a long way to um, having the artists and the gallery um, owners and the lenders get excited about the, the thesis of the exhibition, helped them then want to lend to it. The challenge was to come up with a succinct way to describe the concept of artists using pattern and dress as a way of talking about their cultural identity. Well, pattern ID uh, came about because we, we couldn't think of a better term, and we had many meetings. Ellen and I talked at lunch um, last year, almost every day, about you know how to describe this exhibition, and it's really difficult to describe. Until you see the works, and then you get the idea that artists have always used uh, pattern, dress, and their own personal and cultural identity in their works, and it comes out sometimes in very subtle ways, historically, uh, but these artists are using it in a very overt way. A number of people here at the museum got together and we had several brainstorming sessions and we were looking for ways to talk about this concept uh, in the, uh, that was punchy and that would describe uh, everything that the exhibition is about. And after uh, many, many hours and many, many ideas, we decided that Pattern ID really said it all. You have the exhibition concept, the theme, the name, and even an idea of some of the artists for the exhibition. Now, pulling it all together. Well, pulling this exhibition together is, uh, has been extremely complicated. Um, uh, we took on in a year where most um, museums were retrenching and doing exhibitions from their permanent collections only, we were taking on an exhibition of uh, global artists from multitude of lenders um, and, and young artists and young galleries. And that led to the degree of difficulty, um, an exciting one, but uh, a, a difficult one. Securing the artwork was quite a challenge. We looked to many, many different sources from all around the country and in some cases around the world.
Rounding up this mass of lenders took all of those things. We had to be on the phone constantly. Um, Ellen and I were um, uh, on the phone with, with galleries and using the gallery owners to help us find lenders in some cities, um, or on, on email um, with, with, with lenders, or, or, or writing to them, sometimes a multitude of times, to get them to finally agree to let their masterpieces out of their homes. Because if you have one of these gorgeous things in your house, why would you want to get lend it away for a few months? The behind the scenes work is almost never ending. From negotiating with lenders and sending out loan agreements to deciding the details for mounting the exhibition. Well, this exhibition we decided um, called for the kind of um, exuberant uh, design. Uh, and Ellen and Joe worked really closely on deciding what kind of colors uh, would work with the objects or with the room. Um, they went through many rounds of, of deciding for the, you know, the exact right orange, the exact right purple, or the exact right uh, yellow to, to use as an accent. Another uh, exciting thing about this exhibition is that the artworks came in a truck. We, we bring them down to art storage, let them acclimate to our environment, and then start opening um, the, the crates and packages. And that for us, uh, for this exhibition in particular, was like Christmas because some of these pieces we'd been studying from uh, digital images but hadn't seen them physically. It was, it was uh, shocking sometimes as we opened these things how incredibly beautiful and, and complicated the, the actual surfaces of the works were that you can't really see from photographs. And then once the ob objects get opened, we start checking them in, we start doing the condition reports, um, the preparators uh, and, and designers, Joe Walton and Craig Arnold, start deciding how are we gonna hang these things, in what way will we handle them to get them upstairs. Everything gets sort of organized and sort of, we, we get a train together of, of objects and get an order of how we're gonna start installing the galleries. And then our preparators then start laying the objects out and work with the curators on deciding how they work within the room. Um, that usually has been predetermined um, with, with meetings and, and uh, design issues, but then once you get the actual works in the galleries, then the decisions of, we need to move this to that wall or this to that wall, and then you get the look of the room set, and then the actual installation starts. It's very much like a jigsaw puzzle. We had um, three works by this one artist, but we needed a fourth because it needed to fit into this room, or we had a work that was too big and uh, just wouldn't work in, in the room that we were going to have that artist in, or we had the four rooms set, but the last one just wasn't working, and oftentimes it took that last final piece that fit in just perfectly to make the whole room sing. They relate to each other so amazingly, and that was almost, that was, uh, it was expected and unexpected. Um, and I think the theme, the, the revelation from that is that they, uh, the world and people are so incredibly interconnected in ways that I don't think we realize. And it's illustrated in the artwork itself in the exhibition, I think. Um, the round bindies uh, flow into the round jellyfish eyes of Murakami's paintings. Uh, the, the bindies become the stars in the night for the ship in Shonabare's La Meduse, and uh, so on and so forth. The works just kind of flow into each other in a, in a really amazing way. If you, you take all of the works together and you mash them up, and what you have is, a, is kind of a giant kaleidoscope of world cultures and uh, pop culture and fashion and uh, religion, gender, all different themes that sort of emanate from the work. So I started doing a series of work about a group of young Japanese people that were darkening their skin and changing their hair textures because they became infatuated, maybe, with uh, black culture, specifically hip-hop culture. I see things that, that, that I find that are similar between people, between people in general. And I just, I make them exist in this other world. I let them exist in another world, let me say it like that. We live in a multicultural world, and I, um, I was struck by, um, attracted to, the statement the work makes about um, the multicultural world we live in and uh, its contribution to our understanding of human beings throughout our country as well as throughout the world. I started choosing these artists you know, quite a while ago and they were relatively unknown and they, many of them have become rising stars if not superstars during the course of this past year. Um, so it, it, 
it proves Ellen's foresight. Um, and it's also exciting for those artists to go from being shown in, in galleries and getting recognition in, in, and reviews in, in New York galleries to being seen in an exhibition where they can be combined. It's always an honor, I think, when, when either institutions or individual people believe in you so much that they put you on a wall. I mean, I always get a kick out of it. I still, it still fascinates me and it still, um, it still overwhelms me. You know, it is so important for an artist to be in uh, a museum show. This does wonders for their career. I mean, it's wonderful to be in gallery shows and to be shown all over the country. But to have a show in a museum like the Akron Museum is just wonderful. The exciting thing about this exhibition and, and contemporary art making is that you can show so much more of yourself. There's no reason to hide the fact that you are uh, of, a, of another color or another culture. You can celebrate that. And these artists are celebrating all those parts of themselves. So you can see more of the individual artist in their work because they can show every part of themselves uh, and, and their history and all their influences in their work. These artists may be talking about identity and culture, but seldom has the message been so beautifully and historically expressed. I think that's one of the things that, that, uh, that new artists, young art artists, are, are not tied to the tradition of, of how things have been done in the past. They've, they've, the rules have been broken so that they can use felt to make a painting. They can use a grandma's doily to turn into a, a costume or, or use rhinestones in a way that um, instead of being an embellishment on a dress, it can become a glittering afro. They're incredible. It's talking about important cultural themes and trends in the world today, but it's doing it in such an appealing and enticing way. The artwork is gorgeous. Uh, the artist's use of materials is really exciting. It's very tactile, even though we don't invite people to touch the work. But um, there are so many textures and so many rich patterns and colors, and the craftsmanship is just absolutely stunning. Artists are looking to art history as part of their influence um, and, and part of what they, they, they come from to build their artwork. But it's not necessary to know that history to appreciate them. It's, it's one of those things that you can, you can know art history and get that Candy Wiley is using or playing off of Renaissance painting, or that Mickling Thomas has, has known and looked at Rembrandt's and Picasso's, and it's in there. But you don't need to know that as a viewer, but it makes your viewing experience more, more complex and that there's more layers, there's more to dig down into if you desire, if you want to read more about it or read the catalog, you can get more of that information, but it's all there. The artwork is so layered. Um, it's collaged in the sense that artists are collage, artists are combining um, time and place and identity. They're bringing together influences both from their cultural heritage and also from uh, popular culture and from their own experiences moving throughout the world. So. I think there's something, everyone can pick up on something, some element in each work without necessarily being aware of the art historical references. Pattern ID has another historical reference to offer. Pattern ID will only be seen in Akron, Ohio. It's only being seen here so people have to come to Akron to see it. However, the book that we published documents the exhibition and it will have a wide distribution around the country uh, through artists, through book distributors, through galleries, through other museums and it will have a long lasting impact we hope. The catalog is a way of documenting the, the gathering of this group of artists and of uh, documenting the importance of this theme which I think is very relevant to our world today. So it will be a record of um, a, a trend that was taking place in the contemporary art world uh, in 2010. The uh, catalog is also like another exhibition. The artworks are seen in a different way, in a different order in the catalog than they are here in the exhibition. So it's like another, uh, another curated piece. One of the sad things when you work in a museum is to be doing great exhibitions year after year and you see these fabulous works of art that have been hanging in your galleries disappear and go back to wherever, to somebody's private house, to another museum, overseas. 
this exhibition, we've acquired several of the major works in the exhibition so that there will be a permanent legacy right here in our community and people won't have to say, oh, remember that stuff that's gone? Well, some of it's gonna stay here. Two works the museum purchased are La Madu's and Girlfriends and Lovers. I immediately knew that it was perfect for the exhibition because uh, it incorporates all kinds of incredible art historical references and popular culture references and it's definitely autobiographical and it's you know enormous and flamboyant and it was just perfect it for me it sort of uh, it tied in all of the the themes of the exhibition and I, I couldn't wait to uh, place it in, in the exhibition the work fell out of reach when it was loaned to the US ambassador to the UN but Ellen convinced the museum that purchasing the work would be one way to get it off the ambassador's dining room wall. So we were able to get it out of the residence just in time for pattern ID. The opening party was so gratifying because we had been working so hard on this exhibition and we had hoped that people would, would get it. But it, it's a hard uh, concept to grasp just from reading about it. But I think because we got some images out there early and we explained and talked to um, artists in the, in the community, we got people to sort of get that this is an event. And we were so gratified that people actually showed up, got dressed, enjoyed the party, and really celebrated both the exhibition and, and the event of the opening. The opening party was really exciting. It was really fun to watch people flow in, wearing their patterns, and uh, just there seemed to be a wonderful energy in the air. People were feeding off of the artwork and uh, feeding off of each other. And uh, I think, you know, there were two spectacles that night. One was the art, and the other was everyone in their patterns. Uh, this is a what I call a wearable art duster that I created. And it was based upon the design that's on my back, with, which is Mount Fuji. And I, I designed this garment myself. Um, I'm wearing a, a many-colored coat uh, that a friend of mine said it looks like I stepped out of a biblical tent. <laughs> and I'm wearing jewelry that's more turquoise color and silver because I'm an antique dealer and I do sell and I love jewelry. I am totally blown away by the colors and the shapes and the just... It's, it's huge. It's just very awesome. I'm loving it. How about you? What do you think of the exhibition? It's awesome. The craftsmanship of all the artwork is just amazing. I'm a painting and drawing major, so going up to the paintings and seeing like every, all the detail is just awesome. We, for our art school, we kind of got the little activity event thing that we're doing to do the wallpaper uh, outfits. So, I mean, we just were taking all sorts of patterns and trying to fit in everything else. And at home, I put a bunch of different stuff together, just mishmashing. Um, I mean, it's pretty similar. We actually kind of work together on our outfits. So, <laughs> so we have some some like shared components. Like she has the metallic on her hat, and I have the metallic <laughs> on my hat and my mini skirt. I don't know. Um, and I just I tried to wear a lot of stripes and just a lot of bright colors. Um, I think it's really great to show that so people can see what art's really about. It's not just about seeing a sculpture from the 1800s. It's not just about seeing some really fancy like painting. It's like everything around you. It's who you are, and it's expressing yourself in the way that you can and want to. Looking at like this piece right here, it's neat to see how all the cultures intermix. Like sometimes you just think solely about your culture and not so much about everyone else. But here you can kind of see how everyone is like blending together, not just race, but you know, sexuality and everything else. It's really neat. We also have a really fun activity in the McDowell Galleries where people are invited to uh, identify their pattern ID. Um, you can actually take your wristband that you use for entry into the museum and the exhibition, um, take it off and attach all kinds of swatches of fabric or rhinestones or uh, buttons and that sort of thing to your wristband and add it to a wall of pattern IDs that reflects uh, the makeup of our community. It's really fun that you can go and express that uh, immediately after having seen all this amazing artwork.
Does art like this impact our lives or teach us anything? Wow, I never, I don't know if it does. I mean, that would be great if it did. If there were anything about, one thing about my art that I would hope would, would educate people on the world today, I would hope it would just be this just non-classifying world where you just are who you are. <laughs> be yourself, but at the same time, accept others for being themselves as well. Everybody is art. You know, it doesn't matter what race you are, it doesn't matter what, what, you, what gender role you are, it doesn't matter. We're all one. It's very empowering. It teaches us to be open to anything that is going on. This is, for some people, they haven't seen anything like this. In the end, we're all human beings um, in this world together, and we should learn to appreciate each other always. I think art like this teaches us to be open and to be curious and to look. And that's, that's what I think is really exciting about contemporary art. It teaches us about the world around us and it teaches us about ourselves and about the people around us. And I think that's exciting. It's just important to keep your eyes open and be open to uh, connections and, and learning about other people in the world. And, and again, I think the artwork can teach us about ourselves too.